your book gave you one example of noise and how to look at the definition of what noise can be. I'm going to give you another theory about noise, which breaks it down into four categories. First category is physical noise. Physical noise is any type of obstacle or interference that happens within your external environment. Somebody knocking at the door, or somebody's coat rustling beside you, a teacher tapping the board, a fire alarm, a car honking, different things that for somebody who has good hearing would be something that most people in your environment could also hear. Obviously, if those type of things go on and somebody else is trying to talk to you, it's going to interfere or distract you from what the person is trying to say, or it might even distract the person who's trying to communicate the message. So physical noise is definitely something that can interfere in the communication process. The second type of noise, psychological noise. Psychological noise is noise that happens within your head. You might have a uh, been caught by a teacher at some point when you were daydreaming and not really paying attention to the teacher and your mind just kind of wandered off and your teacher calls on you and you have that quick and you're trying to rewind and remember what the last thing was that you heard. That's an example of psychological noise. Psychological noise can be purposeful in the fact that you're trying to think about something else or it can be like daydreaming and you just all of a sudden your mind goes and don't really realize the specific point at which you started to veer away from the communication process at hand. Psychological noise examples might include other things like thinking about a past argument that you had maybe with a boyfriend or girlfriend the night before. Could be something as simple as trying to decide in your head where you want to go for lunch. Uh, it might involve having uh, something that you're worried about. And obviously, if you've got other things going on in your head, it's going to distract from the communication process at hand. So that's the second type of noise, psychological. The third type of noise, according to this theory, is physiological noise. Physiological. Physiological noise means an obstacle or interference that happens within the body. Not necessarily um, in your head, but maybe it might be a person who has a lisp, and that might interfere with the communication process or make it a little bit more difficult. It might be somebody who has a hearing challenge. Maybe there's ringing in their ear, or maybe they're partially or completely deaf. That could be considered a physiological type of noise. In some places where children are malnourished, the body is so hungry that that actual hunger sensation interferes with the child's learning process. That would be an example of physiological noise. Uh, maybe you have a headache, a migraine headache. Obviously, it's going to distract you from being able to pay attention to what somebody is saying. So that's a different type of noise than physical, which is something in your environment that you can hear, psychological, which is something that distracts you, like with your thoughts. So physiological, think about the body, things that happen in the communication process that make it harder to communicate, uh, basically, again, just by yourself or with the other person that you're communicating with. So somebody who has a lisp, somebody who stutters, or within yourself, like a migraine headache, uh, being deaf, having a lisp yourself. So that's physiological. The last type of noise, semantic. Semantic noise. Semantics has to do with the meaning of words. And if you don't understand the meaning of the word, it's going to create some obstacle or interference. For example, maybe you've gone to the doctor and you've asked about something that's been bothering you with your, some, some of your symptoms, and your doctor starts explaining things in medical terms. You might say to the doctor, oh, can you tell me that in layman's terms? Meaning that what the doctor is telling you, you don't have a, a specific comprehension of that exact word or what that word means. But it doesn't necessarily have to be jargon with a profession. It could just be other type of words that one person uses that another person isn't familiar with. For example, if I said to you, tomorrow's assignment is to go online, go to the discussion board, and describe your duvet. Now some of you might have an idea of what I'm talking about, but I'm guessing many of you wouldn't. Uh, duvet is another word for a comforter or a quilt, but probably
probably most of you would have understood quilt or comforter, whereas duvet, maybe only a small percentage of you would know. So when I said that word duvet, you had some semantic noise. Now sometimes, different types of noise can be classified in a specific category, but they can quickly turn into a different type of noise. For example, let's say I'm hungry but I'm not malnourished hungry, but let's just say I skipped dinner last night and I didn't have a chance to have breakfast today and so now it's coming up on lunch hour and I'm starting to get hungry. So maybe I have a little bit of the physiological noise coming into play where I'm a little bit more distracted, my body isn't quite up to being able to concentrate as easily as it could. But all of a sudden, my stomach growls. My stomach growling would be an example of a physical noise, noise that other people could hear. But because I'm kind of embarrassed about it, that noise quickly turns into psychological noise for me because now I'm worried that, oh, who else heard? Did somebody else hear my stomach? So now I'm thinking about the fact that my noise from my stomach, from my tummy growling, might have been loud enough for other people around me to hear. So that definitely would be psychological noise for me. So in that example, you can see how it crossed different categories quite quickly. But this is just another way of looking at noise that's a little bit different than how your book talks about it. So again, the four categories in this theory, physical noise, psychological noise, physiological noise, and semantic noise.